Hey everyone, my name is Wedge. We continue our Magic Origins coverage with another lore video, this time talking about the origins of Jace. I know, I'm excited too. We've already covered Chandra and Liliana, so if you want to see those videos, there will be links right here, so convenient. Also, be sure to hit the like button if you enjoy videos like this. Let's get right to it. Jace's story begins on the plane of Vryn, with him climbing up 23 flights of stairs within a mage ring to get to his house where he is sure to be scolded. His family is incredibly poor and he himself is far from a model student. This is something that his father worries about constantly. After all, he doesn't want Jace making the same mistakes that he did growing up. Jace enters his home to an angry father. Apparently his school contacted his parents because they think he cheated on an exam that was meant to be impossibly difficult. It was filled with trick questions and requiring skills far above the intelligence level of where he should be, but Jace knew all the answers. He didn't one moment and then suddenly he just did. So the school told his parents he was cheating. After failing to convince his father that he didn't cheat, Jace runs out of the house and to the top of the mage ring where his family lives. With each step, he can hear the thoughts of everyone around him. This is a common occurrence for him. Anyways, the mage ring where he lived was part of a system of mage rings that allowed pure mana to travel from one place to another. While sitting on top of his, Jace is able to watch one of these amazing occurrences. That would have been all fine and dandy, but just then a group of bullies find him. They begin to harass Jace, forcing him to call himself a freak, punching him in the stomach, pretty juvenile stuff. As it continues, Jace becomes desperate to get away. He delves into the mind of the biggest bully, Tuck. As Tuck beats on him, Jace asks if the kid is frightened. Is he scared all the time because his father is a drunk? A drunk that comes home and beats him. Tuck starts choking Jace. Jace keeps going. Every time you told yourself you'd fight back, but you never did. Tuck shoves Jace, and right as he's about to fall off the manor ring to certain doom, he grabs onto an edge of the roof. With the whirling mana below him, Jace needs help to get back up on the ring. Tuck, outraged by Jace's prying, is about to step on his hands, effectively killing him. In that moment, Jace's eyes turn blue, and so do those of another bully named Caden. Jace is in his head. Jace, controlling Caden, reaches out and pulls himself up, then runs away from the bullies. Caden falls to the ground. Jace locks himself in his room for days. Eventually, his mother convinces him to let her in, one of the only people Jace really trusts and cares about. He tells her everything that happened, and she realizes that he's a telepath. Much like Chandra and her parents, Jace's mother still loves him unconditionally. That isn't the problem. The problem is that the boy Caden, who Jace took over, is still out cold, and the healers don't have a clue how to bring him back. Yeah, it's, it's not good. After another couple of days, Jace's parents tell him that they've been talking to an Arbiter, a mage who might be able to help Jace control his abilities. While skeptical, he can tell that his parents only mean well, so he joins them in going up to the ring's observation deck to meet the mage. When they get there, in all of its glory is a sphinx. Without speaking a word, he introduces himself as Alhamra in Jace's mind. They begin having a mental conversation. Alhamra tells Jace that he wants to make him his apprentice, to take him away from this ghetto and bring him somewhere his talents can be used to their fullest. Jace knows that he has to leave and doesn't think for long before agreeing. He promises his parents that he'll be back even though it may be years. He then gets on top of the Sphinx and they fly away. As they fly, Alhamra tells Jace about the war on Vryn between the Amprin and the Trovian Separatists. Both sides of the conflict want to control the core, basically the center of all mana on the plane. The war has been going on for decades and it won't likely ever stop. Both sides want the core and neither is willing to give it up or destroy it. Alhamra's job is to negotiate and maintain the peace between the two factions. This requires a delicate touch as neither side can be allowed to truly win. The moment the other side realizes they're losing, they'd probably just go all scorched earth on everything and cause damage that could take centuries to rebuild. Jason and Alhamrit fly for a few days before reaching their destination. Fast forward in time two years. Jace has been training under the Sphinx and has grown into an incredibly powerful telepath at the age of 15. He can read specific thoughts instead of a huge mess of everything around him. He can influence people without hurting them. He can even create illusions that convince themselves they're real. Pretty crazy stuff. Anyways, Jace is charged with basically spying on enemy camps and gathering intel through telepathy to be used against the Trovians during peace talks. Anything to keep the front lines from fighting. On his return from one of these trips, Jace realizes that he's grown significantly more powerful. Maybe powerful enough to reach into Alhamrit's mind, something he's never been able to do before. He enters the Sphinx's mind. All of a sudden, Jace sees himself from the outside, overwhelmed, fading from existence into the Aether. 
Just as he's about to be lost from Vryn, the Sphinx pulls him back. Jace hears one word from the Arbiter, Planeswalker. Alhamrit wipes Jace's memory of the Aether in an instant and tells him to retire for the night. Back in the world outside Alhamrit's memories, Jace doesn't know what a Planeswalker is or where he nearly went, but he remembers that his memory was wiped. He wonders how many times this has happened and just what a Planeswalker is. Jace tries to recreate the jump to the Aether but fails. He's now convinced that there are worlds beyond Vryn, worlds that maybe he can reach. Jace tries to convince himself of Alhamra's goodwill that he had Jace's safety in mind and would explain everything to him eventually. However, for the moment, Jace wrote down his thoughts on planeswalking, since it was clear that whatever the reason, Alhamra was erasing his memory, possibly habitually. He wrote everything down, dated it, and then deleted his own memory so that the Sphinx couldn't even know. Jace proceeds to find this note several times over the next few weeks, gets really upset, then erases his mind again to protect his secret research. Jace goes on another intelligence mission, this time to an Amprin camp. He notices that there are way more guards than usual. Thanks to his convenient telepathy, he learns the guard's schedule and sneaks by unnoticed. He reads the minds of more guards and finds out that a general is visiting the camp, the reason for the heightened security. Jace finds the general and probes his mind. He sees the entire Trovian plan. Apparently, a hooded figure was giving all the enemy intel he'd recover to the Amprins. Jace sees everything the Trovians have planned, but he takes too long. The last thing he sees is a glimpse of just who this hooded human figure was delivering intel. He leaves the general's mind in a panic. The general falls to the ground, and Jace uses illusions to keep the guards busy so he can run away. That, that could have gone better. Jace returns to Alhamrit's lair and begins packing his things. He finds a note that he wrote that says something about Alhamrit being a deceiver and a liar. He doesn't know exactly what it means, but after what he saw in the Trovian general's mind, he knows something's up. He's had enough of the Sphinx's secrets. He finds Alhamrit and challenges him to mind combat. The Sphinx is confident that there's no way Jace can beat him, but Jace knows that if Alhamrit is going to invade his mind, then he'll have the ability to do the exact same thing to the Sphinx. Jace sees everything he needs to. You know how the Sphinx said he was an arbiter? Someone whose job it is to negotiate peace? Yeah, well each time Jace gets new information and tells Alhamrit about it, he erases Jace's mind and sells the information to the opposing faction, using Jace, the hooded figure, as a go-between. And of course, this pushes the war to keep going and endangers Jace each time. After all, there's no profit from a war arbiter in peacetime. Enraged, Jace fights with all of his might. Alhamra tries to erase all the memories in Jace's mind, desperate to keep his asset, but it doesn't work. In Jace's head, the Sphinx is vulnerable. Jace secures victory by removing the Sphinx's memory of how to breathe. In that moment, right as he's being mentally destroyed and returned by the Sphinx, he planeswalks. Jace hits the ground in the middle of a bustling city, Ravnica. People are tripping over him and telling him to get out of the way. He has no idea where he is. He begins to read people's minds, trying to find out as much as he can about where he is. All he's able to gather is that he's in a large city. Apparently this part of the city is run by a group called the Orzov. He also learns that his manner of dress suggests he's little more than a peasant. He finds people who look similarly downtrodden and follows them into a much darker part of the city. There he reads the mind of a starving girl, Imara Tondris. She can help him. Jace finds Amara and asks her to take him in. Under her protection, he was safe. He had new clothes. He didn't die. He uses this time to think about who he is. It takes him a while, but he remembers that his name is Jace Bellerin. He has no idea what that means or what kind of person he is, but he knows that's his name and that's a start. Hardship, betrayal, planeswalking, what a great story. What'd you all think about Jace's origins? I did not expect the Sphinx to be working for both sides. It really gives a bad name to the Azorius. You just hate to see that. Anyways, let me know what you think in the comments. We still have Nyssa and Gideon left to go, so get pumped for that, as well as another whole week of Magic Origins spoilers. Hype, hype! As always, subscribe for the latest and most reliable Magic Origins spoiler information you could ever need. This is the Manosaurus. I'm Wedge. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.